Now, Marlon, this is a bit of a change for you, isn't it, doing such a big epic film like Watchmen? Did that change the way you approached the role of, of the Silk Spectre at all? You know, the thing that I loved about the role is, is it's not, it is definitely a huge change for comedy, absolutely. But it's also, it wasn't too crazy. It's not, we're not superhumans. We don't have superpowers. We're very real people. It's a very character sort of based film. So um, Laurie was an easy one to relate to because really she's just going through things in life that any woman would go through. I mean, it's sort of a, a soul searching, coming of age moment for her when, when we start in on this film. Um, you know, she is just a vulnerable, sort of wonderful, she can also be very strong woman, which is uh, she's a very, very many human qualities. So it, was, um, it wasn't too hard to relate to. For hardcore comic fans, Watchmen isn't just another comic book or another graphic novel. It's a, it's like it's a masterpiece. It's a bible to some of these people. Yes. Um, any pressure in taking the role of Laurie <laughs> slash Silk Spectre in that? Just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a massive amount of pressure, and you know, it sort of, it, you sort of felt it in increments. At first, it was just the script, and I hadn't read the novel. I didn't know anything about it. Um, and the script was fabulous, and I just thought, what a wonderful, you know, what a wonderful, amazing film this is going to be. And then I read the novel, and I go, wow, this is really great. We really got to make sure it's it, we get all these wonderful details. And, and then we went to Comic Con and <laughs> stood face to face with all the fans, and we saw how passionate they were about it, and and rightfully so. I mean, it is an incredible novel, and a lot of times when people make films out of novels, they tend to botch it, and it's never as good. So. The pressure kept building, and then we were filming, and we we were obsessed with, you know, we'd bring our novels to set every day and make sure that we got all the panels and what we were doing matched, and you know, so we were all very, very, we all became big fans of the novel. So we came into it, you know, sort of in the mindset of what the fans would want, and hopefully we succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and speaking of you know of fans, and you mentioned comic cons there as well. Are you worried that, that, that by playing Silk Spectre, you're going to be doomed to decades of comic cons wearing the yellow and black latex outfit opposite Star Trek stars and, you know, Battlestar Galactica stars? And, <laughs> Listen, and I'm just going to clarify that right now. I am never going to wear that latex again. <laughs> <laughs> Unless there's a sequel, of course. Um, but you also spend a bit of time out of the um, out of the black and, and yellow latex yes, because there are some I. fairly racy scenes there, both with, oh. um, <laughs> with Dr. Manhattan oh, and, and, and the Night Owl. Um, did that did that affect you know sort of your decision to take the role on? No, I I never I I feel like when you read a script, if there are scenes that are you know of a sexual orientation, if it's not gratuitous, then I don't mind it at all. If it serves a purpose, if it's if it's for a reason, then I don't mind at all. Um, I, I'm not very prudish, you know. I, I I it's never comfortable. I'm not running onto set tearing my clothes off going, please let me be naked at all. <laughs> it's actually the opposite. It's it's always an uncomfortable moment, you know. Um, but but everyone was so respectful and and really just I felt so comfortable, as comfortable as you possibly can feel. Um, and you also do some some pretty full on action and, and fight sequences there. Were you uh, it, was this you know unfamiliar to you, and did you have to go into a strict fitness and training program? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes I did. Um, you know, we started two months before we actually started filming the the, the movie. Um, we started with intense training, just kind of boot camp, trying to get us into shape. Or myself, I was pretty much the only. The only loser had to do it. Um, <laughs> everyone else got these amazing costumes that had the muscles built into them, but of course mine was skin tight and showed every single bump on my body. So I was like, all right, we got to get this into shape. So they trained us really hard. They did boot camp. We were trained by an ex-Navy SEAL. Um, and then a month out, we started all the fight training, um, which was very challenging to make it look real, that sort of to make it look like we've been fighting our whole lives. but. Our, our stunt coordinator was meticulous. Damon Caro is just a true professional and, and got us to, you know, to make sure he wanted us to do all the fight stuff ourselves. Yeah. And how was it fighting in those, those stiletto boots? Because they're pretty, um, they're pretty full, full oh, on, those it's boots. It's just like, just like fighting in uh, running shoes. <laughs> I mean, seriously, not only am I having to learn how to fight, but then they put on the stilettos. I can't even walk in stilettos. I'm horrible <laughs> at it. Um, so that in itself was a huge challenge. John thinks that there's going to be a nuclear war. What if that's why someone wants us out of the way? So we can't do anything to stop it. An attack on one is an attack on all of us. 
Watchmen are over. What do you suggest we do about it? Retribution. Hey, I'm Alan Ackerman uh, from Watchmen, and it is coming out March 5th, so don't miss out.